Since I have this log in this position with the outside face up, that's when I like to score it. It's just easier to do everything I can do to a log while it's in that position. And I have a brand new ax that I get to use. This ax is made by Jared Lanham at Refiner's Forge. He is, that is his YouTube channel name. And he also is on Instagram and he posts a lot of pictures of what he's making on Instagram. And I'm always scrolling through Instagram looking at his pictures. And he made this ax for me and he copied it from a keen cutter ax that I had that I don't want to use because it's in mint condition. And so he made this ax pretty much like the keen cutter. This weighs a little bit over four pounds. It's got a five inch uh, bit on it or cutting edge. And I have been waiting to get to use this ax. It's got his little mark here that he stamps in there while the metal's still hot. Now you can see him making this particular ax. We'll leave a, a link to his uh, YouTube channel and to that particular video. Now I'm gonna set this down. He also is making slicks for people, custom slicks for people, and chisels and other timber framing tools. Now, I've had different people ask me, where are you finding your tools? Well, it's getting harder to find these old tools. So what I would recommend is to, is to check out Jared at Refiner's Forge. He will make the slick that you want. Uh, he will put a handle in it for you if you want that. He will make the chisel, the size of chisel that you want, and put a handle in it if you want him to do so, or fro. And he's also started making some broad axes. But he made this for me. He was so gracious to make this and send it to me, and it is really, really sharp. Now, he didn't send the handle. I, I bought the handle and put in it. But... This is not the last time you're going to see this axe. I intend on doing a video of a round log, take a uh, hewing a round log way the old people did, and I will be using this particular axe. So I'm going to use it to put my score marks in this log. It'll be the first time I've got to use it for that, so I'm kind of excited about it. But check out Jared Lanham at Refiner's Forge. Still really, really sharp. I love it. We've just about got round one worked out. The seal logs and the, the two end logs on B and D wall. If you look, you can see that I've made a note down here to not cut the bottom notch. And we will leave that uncut until the seal logs are set. Then we'll take a water level and we'll check the elevation on the seal log and if we have to we can make an adjustment on this bottom notch on all four corners. But if your axe is sharp you can join me and we'll start hewing this log.
Alrighty, y'all. I've been working on the logs for uh, my buddy, uh, Brother Wayne. Uh, we've got several of them worked out for round one. This particular log is D wall round two. And I've got the outside face up and I'm gonna roll it over because all of my layout will be from the inside face out. Let me get this thing flipped over. You can see there's some fall damage here, or I'm not sure how it got damaged. It could have been in the woods. Who knows where it took place? Now, not every log that you get is gonna be perfect. Uh, you have to kind of work with them. And once you get a little more comfortable with cutting the logs out, you'll, you'll learn tricks or things that you can do. Now, what I can do to this log, and the reason I'm using this log is it is the right width here in the midpoint that I needed for round two. But it does have this damage here. But I can take my little saw with the carving bar and I can reshape that just a little bit to give it more of a natural look. What I'll do, I can take a draw knife, or uh, I use a grinder quite a bit with a 36 grit disc. I can just, the outside part of this, where the chinking will be, will really be all that I need to, to worry about. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this plane and start doing the layout. I've got the wedge the, on that end in the center of the log so that I can uh, tip it back and forth. And I've got my wedge here and I can put under. And I'm watching my level. And I'm getting it level right in the center. And then I'll plane it. Then I'll come back and check and see how I'm doing there. Oh, that's not too bad. That looks pretty good too. But I'll go ahead and plane it. And then I'll come back and do my really close leveling on it. When you're using one of those power planers, there's gonna be times that you get a little groove with it. Uh, it just happens. It takes a little while to learn how to, to get one of those to where they don't do that, but occasionally I will get a groove and my, I can feel it with my finger right here. But what I do, I take my spoke shave and I set it real light, but I can come back and I can kind of work those grooves out I have to kind of work with the grain though. And I'm just making a real light pass. I've got it set really, really light. But you can see I'm kind of turning my spoke shave at an angle, uh, not going square across this way. I'm holding it a little bit askew. And it just seems to slice the wood a little bit easier. I'm ready now to true the area up where the notch goes. And I've already got the, uh, the butt end of it trued up. I always like to do that first because there's sometimes there may be more wood to have to deal with there and I always do that one first but I'm at the tip of the log this log will be butt right in round two and I just take my level and I set it up there and kind of check it where the the notch area will be and by looking at my level it's a little bit high right here now I can use a hand plane to true that up, which works well. But since I am doing this work for somebody else, I'm trying to speed up the process just a little bit. And I have a, this is a 1900B uh, model, a uh, little three and a quarter Makita planer. And I've got it set really light. I've got new blades in it. And I can speed up the process of using the hand plane by using this. I have to keep this set really light though when I'm doing this. And I start on the side that doesn't have to have any wood taken off of it. And I'll go towards the side that needs to come off. So with a real light touch, I just take this planer
and I go across it and then I'll check it with the level kind of see how I'm doing okay right there where uh, pretty much where the shoulder line will be it's right on the money and I can just slide this out now right in there it's still a little bit heavy on this side and right in there it's getting pretty close but I feel just a little bit of a rock in my level of course I'm doing this but I can kind of feel just a little bit there so I've got a little bit of a bump here that I need to take off so I can real lightly go back across here. And check it again. Now I'm getting really, really close right there. So that's probably where I'll stop using the power planer and I'll take my hand plane and just make a few passes. Just really light. Just another couple passes maybe. or two or three and I'll just keep checking that now right there I've got it right on the money and right there so I've got those two areas where the notches go the notch layout on both ends ready to go so now I'm ready to snap a center line I'm marking the center line with a pencil so I can use the pencil line see if the chalk gets rubbed off I still have my, my pencil line there on round two the notch dimension itself is three and a sixteenth for the lower notch and four and a sixteenth for the upper part of the notch. Uh, actually, in round one, it was four and a six, uh, four and a quarter. I'm sorry for the upper notch and three and a quarter for the lower. And we left the lower notch on B and D wall uncut so that we can uh, check it before we set them. But I'll go ahead and lay this out and get it ready to cut the notches. This is the top of the log, and so I'm coming up from the center line. I'm going to go out here a ways away from the shoulder itself and make my mark and I'm coming up four and a sixteenth there and I'll come out here towards the end of the log or a actually at the end of the log and I'm going to mark it four and a sixteenth from the center line I'm going back to the shoulder where the intersection of the center line and the shoulder lines are and I'm going to come down for the lower part of the notch three and a sixteenth just taking my framing square and putting it on those two points and drawing the line up to the shoulder line now what I've done I have my square the inside of the long leg of the square right on the center line and I've got my template which is a one and three and I've already got the mark to three and a sixteenth down from the center line and I could just hold my hand on that square so it doesn't move and I can just slide this template in along that square until I intersect with my lower layout mark of three and a sixteenth okay I'm right on it now you can't see it from where the the camera is but at this point right here I'm in the wane or the round part of the log and the notch itself actually will be in part of the round the, the line so what I'm going to do while I still have that I'm going to make a little mark right up here towards the end of my template just a little small mark I'll bring the camera around on this side so that you can see what I'm doing I'm taking a draw knife and I'm just kind of cleaning 
this area up right here because I want to be able to see my marks on there really well. Just giving that a little bit of a cleanup. Now I'm taking my level and I'm just laying it up here and I'm putting it on the, the line here my layout line and the mark that I made up here, just a little small mark, I'm going to line up right on top of that and right there. Now this is something that I don't think that I have gone over and actually I'm doing a lot of this, it's actually in other videos, but for those of you who haven't seen those videos yet, there will be a link below to where you can go back and watch those where there may be some more detail but for now, I'm going to transfer my line across the round part of the, uh, the log. And what I'm doing, I'm just sighting down the edge, my level. And I'm just making just a little bitty mark there. Just kind of eyeballing right straight down through there. Making a series of marks. Trying not to bobble my head around. Yeah, I'm just uh, going down the inside face of this and where I'm seeing on the log, that's where I'm starting my mark. And then I can come back and I can just kind of connect the dots there, you might say. Coming across there. My friend Gary is the one that showed me this little trick here. Now I can get down and look at that and I can see from this point where it actually comes out, I can see that it's in line all the way across uh, the bottom layout. And when I cut that with a chainsaw, I'll stay away from this just a little bit more than I normally do. And when I start cleaning it up, I'll be able to get it nice and true with this line all the way down. I'm ready now to transfer the center line down the end of the log on both ends and then I will transfer, snap that line on the outside and I'll come back and I'll have the same uh, layout from the center line down. The upper layout will be a little bit, well, it'll be quite a bit different from the center line to uh, where it comes out down here. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and plumb this down and get me a mark, making sure my bubbles line up. Now, while I'm in this position, I can take my template and I can either hold it on that center line and slide it down to where I intersect with the top part of the notch. It's kind of like using the framing square on the center line where you have something physical to hold the template. I like to use my level and to set it back up there. The level doesn't have to be on the center line anywhere uh, close to it. it. It can just be up there as long as you have it set and plumb. I have it there. Now I can just take the template and just slide down to where I see it's right on that top part of the notch layout. And I'm pushing against it so it doesn't move. And I can make my line all the way down to the outside. Now when I flip this over and I snap the center line, I will be able to measure from the center line back to this point here and I'll transfer it back to the uh, inside the shoulder. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, put the center line on the outside 
I'm putting it right on my center line that I plumbed down from the inside and I'm taking my utility knife and I'm just cutting right in there, right trying to split that line that, I, that marked, the plumb line mark that I made. And that gives me a place to hold this string where it's not, hopefully it doesn't slip on me. Pulling it pretty tight. I'm laying my square right on top of that center line and I'm bringing it in where it touches the end of the log and I'll mark eight inches. That'll be the inside, well it'll be the, the shoulder on the outside, it won't be the inside of the room, it'll be the outside of the building. Bring my square up on there, right up to it. I like to flip my square over and put the bottom side of the long leg back on the center line. When I laid the inside face out on this log, I measured from this end. So I always like to measure from the same end. So I'm gonna hook my tape here and I'll check to make sure that I'm on eight inches uh, right there. And I'll go to the other end. And I'll check that again before I make a mark down here. Make sure that I've got the number eight right on that shoulder line. It looks like I'm pretty close to it. On the outside of the lower notch is measured from the center line. In this instance, it's three and sixteenths because that was our happened to be our notch dimensions. And so I'll come from the center line down to get that uh, the layout of the lower notch. Now I'm using the number four. I just happened to be what laid down there, and I've got that right on the center line and uh, three sixteenths from the center line. I would actually be marking seven and a sixteenth. You could you don't have to do what I do in that instance. You can actually if you've got a good good ruler. You can just set that right on the center line and it might be easy for you to keep up with. On the upper notch, I'm gonna measure the angle that I transferred down on the end of the log with the, with the template. Where that comes out on the outside face, I'm gonna measure that to my center line. And right there, I have exactly two inches. I've put it on eight and it's, it's on, the, on six. So I'm just gonna go back here and put that number six on the center line and mark the eight. 